Hello, today we're going to talk about Google's Jamboard, which is basically like an online whiteboard. With Jamboard, you can write on the screen using the built-in pins or shape features. You can upload images to write on top of, so perhaps a diagram, a chart, something like that. You can invite others to join and collaborate on your Jamboard with you. You can also download the whole Jamboard or just slides from the Jamboard as a PDF or image. And you can save that Jamboard to return to at a later date. Ways you might use this Jamboard is to share your screen during web conferencing to show students how to work through problems. You can also work collaboratively online with students, so from a distance, but um, working online at the same time. You can also cr uh, create slides for each group member to go in and create a slide or work on a particular problem within the Jamboard that everyone will look at later, but designate them per group. You can also design graphic organizers using um, shapes, and then you can work through problems and record your screen using something like Screencast-O-Matic, where you record on top of your screen, you'll be recording on top of your Jamboard so everything you say and write will be um, recorded. And Google Jamboard works on a PC, so a web-based um, product. It's also an app-based product so you can download it on your um, mobile devices. To open Jamboard you just want to log in to your Google account and you may see Jamboard in the waffle area. If not you can just search Jamboard and it will show up. Um, and then here will be a listing of any Jamboards that you've already used. So this is one that I've already created. From here I'm able to click on it, download it as a PDF, or I can actually click in it and go right back into the Jamboard that I had already created and continue from there. But in this case, let's make a new Jamboard. So I'll come to the bottom and I'll choose the plus arrow and it will automatically create me a Jamboard. Now I can rename the Jamboard related to a topic or the date or whatever we're talking about um, or whatever I want to name it to be able to reference later. And now essentially this is your open area to um, create and to and for others to view. So you start out with a white background. You can actually come over here and set a background however. You can choose different backgrounds if maybe you're doing something with graphing or um, other related things there. You can have different backgrounds. You can also upload an image as the background. So you can choose image. You can upload an image. Um, you can take a picture of yourself. So you can go to camera, allow for it to pull your camera, and you can actually take a picture of yourself to be used as the background. Um, my favorite, however, is to use the Google image search because you can then come and search images here, and then you can pick it and then set it as the frame background for your slide. So next you can use the arrows and the items over here on the side. This is your toolbar. The first one is the pen tools. You have the pen, the marker, which is a little bit thicker, the highlighter, and the, and the brush. So with the pen, you can pick it. You can pick whatever color you want, and then you just essentially draw on it and write on it. The marker is very similar, it's just a little bit thicker. Now with the highlighter and the paint, those have a translucency to them, so you can actually use them to highlight on top of words, either words that you've written or words that you uh, have pulled in as an image. So to just kind of add some overall effect. Um, you can also use them on images or whatnot to highlight a particular um, component of the, of the slide itself or of the image itself. So those are the tools. You can also clear the frame and this will clear everything on the frame to where you go back to the original. So it'll clear any annotations that you have there. If you wanted to just erase one section, you could come and use the eraser tool and then you could just erase that one section rather than clear the entire frame. Next we have sticky notes and you can use these um, as ways to just put sticky notes on the Jamboard to return to later or notes um, on for, um, for items as well in addition to like writing on the slides. So we'll add a sticky note and I might say You can color code them if you want sticky notes to be different colors. 
save them and then that will just show up right here on the on the uh, Jamboard and you can just organize it wherever you want. Um, one strategy for using this is to just put little notes up here for the students, but remember that if students are collaborating with you, they are able to use these tools as well. So it might be that you say, okay, students, grab a sticky note and put your name on it and tell me what animal you think this is. So every student would come and grab a sticky note write their name and then write what they think it is and then it would show up here on the jam board and you could go through and say okay well autumn is correct it is a cat or doug is incorrect it's not a mouse or whatnot so remember that they can use the sticky notes as well so you can use these for games um, you can also use these for um, just giving information or to allow students to give information almost in like a game format you can also come and delete those or duplicate those um, if you want to, or you can order them. So we'll just delete that sticky note from there. So moving on with the rest of these, if you want to get to a new slide, you can just click this little image up here at the top and they call them frames, but essentially they're kind of like PowerPoint slides, if you will. So it just gives you a blank frame. You can return to the first frame by clicking the arrow and it'll take you right back. It'll tell you what frame you're on here. So we're on one out of two and now we're at two out of two. And so it might be that I want to type a question. So I come up here to the text box. There's the text box right here. And I type a question and say, so we've added in our text box, we can expand it out. And then in this case, it might be that you have the students come and everybody gets a sticky note, writes their name, and then writes, um, and writes what they want and then you put it here and it will be on the different areas and so maybe another student picks one and then you just have a way to allow them to respond and then you can move them around as well. Another way you might use sticky notes is for you to create the sticky notes yourself and then have the students order them. So you might have a list of sticky notes and you say, okay, this is a process. Please put these in order as needed. And so they would come and move these around collaboratively and work to move them around to put them in the correct order. So that's another way you can use the sticky notes. Moving on, you can also use the shape feature. So here is the shapes on the menu here and you see you have different types of shapes. These can be used to make graphic organizers. So you could use the circles to make a Venn diagram. That middle area isn't perfect, um, but it would work for a Venn diagram. Um, also, what is great is you can come and you can expand this slide. And if you wanted to make one, wanted to make a copy of this slide, you could come and choose duplicate and it would duplicate the slides. And what's great for that is you could have different groups. So you could say, okay, group one, Alice and Alex, you're going to work on this Venn diagram while group two, Ben and Beth are going to work on this one, so on and so forth. So you could set up the slide of what you want it to look like and then just make duplicates of it and then put the groups on there so that when they come in to collaborate they just come to their one group work on it and then we can go everybody can go to that slide and we can talk about it and look at it and um, see what their work looks like and again they can write on these slides by using the text box the pen they can bring in images or they can um, use the shapes so I'll show you where you can bring in images so we talked about setting a background for the entire image but you can also come to image here and you can upload an image, use your camera or my favorite to use the Google search. And you can search a particular image and bring in the image itself. So we're able to do that. Also, you can search, if you search a GIF,
you can bring that in and then it will actually have some movement to it so in that case you're having um, a moving image The last um, tool here is the laser, which you can use when you are talking to the group, um, because basically when you hold it down, it just circles and then it, it'll fade away. But it's a way that you can um, talk about, you know, bring to highlight specific pieces there. So that is what you can use um, the pointer for. Another way you can use shapes, you can use them to create Venn diagrams, but you can also use the shapes to create flowcharts. So you can just use the square, do it once, and then come here and duplicate, and you can just move them there. And you can really quickly and easily create um, a flowchart. You can use your pen to draw out the different ones. And then you can use this to put in the steps if you want to. Or again, you could create the basis of it and then have it copied, come by and then duplicate it and then have each group work on it. So you do the process, you, you know, group one does the, the process for this task. Group two does the process for this task. Group three does the process for this task. Or maybe they're doing the process for the same task and we're just seeing who could do it faster or who um, or who will be able to do it correctly. So you can make duplicate copies um, to be able to, to um, work with those. You can also move them around. If they're not in the correct order, you can grab them and move them as needed. And again, here's how a sticky note uh, might be used. You might just make a slide with different sticky notes on it and then come and duplicate it for different groups. And then when they come in, they will have to put them in ABC order by moving them into the correct order. Okay, so now that we've um, created our Jamboard and kind of have things going as if you are just demonstrating, let me show you how to share it with the rest of the class. So you're gonna come up here to the top and choose to share. Now you have some options. You can choose to type in the emails of particular people you want to share it with. If you're only working with one or two people, then this is great to type in their email. It will send them an email with a link to um, join the Jamboard. And so that's one way to do it. Now, if you're trying to share it with an entire class or a large group of people, it is probably easier to just get the link. Now the difference is if you add in someone here, if you type in someone's email and add it here, when they are joining the Jamboard and editing and working on the Jamboard, um, it is going to show their actual name. So you will know who is who editing on the Jamboard. If you, do, if you use the Get link, it won't know who is editing the Jamboard with you or who is viewing the Jamboard with you, so it will just give you an anonymous person. So in that case, you want to set up some type of measure to know who the person is if you, if you truly want to know. So if we initially just copy the link, this is just going to allow people to be able to view the Jamboard. So in this case, if I copy this link, um, anyone will be able to just view the Jamboard. So this is what I would copy and I would say, okay, meet me online at noon. I'm going to show you how, I'm going to give you a lecture, show you how to do something on the Jamboard. You're just going to watch me. They're not going to be able to interact on the Jamboard because they're just going to be a viewer. Now, in order for them to interact and do things on the Jamboard, if you want them to move things around, add slides, write on the slides, etc., you want to change them to an editor. And I'll show you that process again. You come to share, get link. We're going to change this to where they are editors, and then we're going to copy that link. So again, there's several options here. We have share, type in people's names as either viewers or editors, but again, we're going to be able to know who those people are, but it is a lot of work if you have a lot of people that you're adding. Below, we just have getting a link, and then here we can change that as either a viewer just to watch you or as an editor, and we're going to copy that link. So now we see here up at the top, if we highlight, we see an anonymous Liger has joined our Jamboard. And again, that just lets you know that an anonymous person has um, joined. We won't know who that person is because just by giving the link, it doesn't require them to log in. But now we're going to be able to see what the other person is doing on our slides. So it might be that this person comes and adds in a sticky note. 
and it shows up on the screen and then we're able to see that the Liger was the one that added this so this might be a means for you to figure out who is who if that matters to you. So then we might have the student come to their particular area to fill out what they need to fill out. So say that we're all on this slide together and Beth needs to add this. So Beth would come on her slide and Beth would add in her slide. She can move it around and we are able to see that the Liger is the one that added that sticky note. So that's how you can collaborate that way. In this case, we might be on slide eight to where Beth is putting these in ABC order and you can see her moving them around to put them in ABC order. Again, we're all collaborating together and it, there can be more than one person obviously on a slide. I just have one person logged in right now. It can also be that Beth comes to whatever group she's in for her, for her slides and she comes in and is asked to pull in images or whatnot for her slides. If Beth needs to get your attention, she, she might highlight something to where you're able to see that. So um, a couple of extra things you can do is you can come up to the top and you can download the entire slides, um, the entire set as a PDF. You can also save this particular frame as an image, which would be great if it was something that was already filled out, that the groups had filled out and you want to save a copy of it to put in Google Classroom or somewhere. You can um, save just that one frame as an image or if you download it as a PDF, you're actually downloading the entire slideshow. So we'll open it so we can see what it looks like. And again, it's literally just a PDF of the different slides that we have that have been completed up until that point. So again, a great reference that you can also um, email to the students, upload, put in Google Classroom or another LMS, etc. So um, to leave the Jamboard, you can simply just go back and again, you'll be able to join um, or create a new Jamboard or you could just go back into one that you've already created and pick up where you were left off. So a couple of things that the Jamboard does not do. When, so this one I am the instructor leading the Jamboard. When another person joins, it does not automatically put them on the same slide. So right now as the instructor, I'm on slide two, but Beth, who is right now the Wombat, she is on slide four. So it doesn't keep you all on the same page. So you might wanna make sure to tell the students, okay, we're on slide two, we're on slide four, et cetera, to keep them on the same slide. Also, they are not able to hear your audio. So yes, they're seeing what's on your screen, but they're not hearing you talking. That is not a built-in piece of Jamboard. So in that case, you may want them to just, uh, you may want to use a webinar program, Zoom, Meet, Ultra, whatever webinar program that you're using to meet with the students to be able to use the audio feature to speak to them and then have this open in a new tab. So you're speaking to them through the web conferencing system, but you're collaborating and writing together on the Jamboard because again, the Jamboard does not have a built in audio feature to where they can hear you. Also, the Jamboard does not have a built in record feature. So this isn't getting recorded what you're doing. Now, again, you are able to download the PDF and the image to see the final product, but it's not recording what you're doing. So in cases of using a Jamboard to say, write out a problem. So maybe I'm making a demo of how to do a math problem. So in this case, they would only be able to see the result. They wouldn't see the process and your vocalizations of what you're doing. So in that case, you might want to use a tool like Screencast-O-Matic to where it does make a recording of your screen. You record on top of your Jamboard. You write, and as you write, you work out the problem. You use different colors, and then you verbally say, I'm going to divide by this. I'm going to subtract that, etc., to walk them through the uh, the process. So again, in that case, it's serving mainly as just a whiteboard, a collaborative whiteboard, not as a screen recorder tool. So that's how you use um, Google's Jamboard.